Sit. This is Bubba. And this is Hans, who's not sitting, so he's not getting a treat. If I say it multiple times, then I don't really mean it. Now, since there have been some issues, I'm kind of, there we go, sit. Now, that might have been why he didn't want to sit. This is a conflict. Conf uh, constricted area, which is something we're going to talk about. The guardians have noticed that creates a problem when the dogs are into too constricted an area. We just might as well start there. So for dogs, just uh, I actually work with a lot of police officers and government agents and whatnot, and they tell us that like uh, police officers specifically say one of the most dangerous situations is going to somebody's house during domestic disturbance. Because it's a house, you don't know what. But it's very confined quarters. I work with military guys the same way. They're like, if you're inside, everything is amplified. And it's the same thing for dogs. They don't have multiple escape routes. And also they bump into each other, just kind of like us, sometimes at a club or whatever it is. So um, in the short term, I would kind of avoid having them in a confined area unless they're sufficiently exercised. That's one of the first things I ask the guardians about. And if it, uh, if it wiggles a little bit, that was behance. Uh, but basically, uh, I ask the guardians, come, uh, how much exercise do dogs get? And really most of their exercise is roughhousing with each other. They get some other exercise, but um, it's Nebraska. It's not you know, the best time of the year out here for us. Um, so I come up with some creative ways. I suggest that guardians start the exercise journal. Message me if you forget how to do that. But just start it and put a date at the top, write a column for each dog, and then the number of whatever the exercise was or the duration. Walks are okay, but they're not a super efficient way of exercising a dog. I pull out a laser, and Bubba here would chase the laser. So I ran it up the stairs when he was over. He came up here, then I ran it down the wall, and I had kind of a loop. So um, that, yeah, he didn't, Hans didn't seem to be too interested in the laser, and that's okay, some dogs are, some dogs aren't. Another thing I do, uh, so I would do count each like revolution, each one of these as one. And the first time you do any of these things, do it with an empty stomach, and have the dog keep on doing it until the dog just plops down and says, I'm not doing it anymore. And that way we know how many, maybe we have 50 up-downs on the stairs. Well, then we know that that's his maximum number. Later on, we might do uh, 50, uh, about 30 to 50% of the maximum number, about three to four times a day to exercise them. Another one that I do is a, a doggy stairmaster. I go to the top of the stairs, show the dog how to treat, and I would drop it down there. We have a split level home. The dog runs all the way down there, maybe have a bowl down there so it goes into it. And then when it goes in there, the dog lifts it up. We would come up with a word that needs to go down and a word that needs to go up. Even though he's gonna chase the treat regardless, it's nice to give him a command word so we're going up or down. So business pleasure, up, down, lobby, penthouse, whatever you wanna say. So um, toss the treat down there. Hunts, hunts. Yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't suggest pulling a dog by the tail, but I can use it to get his attention. Um, now, this when they do this, this should be interpreted as they have too much excess energy. They need some exercise, and this is where we give them five or ten minutes of that indoor exercise. So one of them is dropping down the stairs, and I got the same thing. First time with each dog separately. Do it as many times until the dog lays down, since I'm not coming back up anymore. And they'll have different numbers. Um, and then basically uh, we come up and uh, assign the command words and then we can have them going up and down. Exercise usually can be about about every three or four hours. Um, and different versions for each dog. Um, so another one we used was, uh, like I talked about was scent games. You can Google scent games. There's a lot, using the met brain is also very mentally uh, drain, or physically draining for the dogs. Um, and then uh, fetch is another wonderful way to exercise dogs. But whatever else it is, just make sure it's something that the dogs like to do and then give them that exercise periodically throughout the day uh, to set them up for success. Now, in a, a video above, we talked about a number of rules, so I'm not going to talk about what the rules are, but it's very important when we have multiple dogs that we have rules. If they don't have any rules, they start seeing you as being peers, and they see you as peers and listening to you as optional. The more that we enforce rules, the more the dogs see us as acting like a leader. And dogs are not going to be like, oh, you say you're the leader? Okay, you're in charge. Show me you're the leader through your actions by what you do. Are you enforcing not being on the furniture or whatever it is consistent? Uh, he's really no literally nosy. Uh, he's got his nose deep in my bag. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. We also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is redirecting the dog into a sit or a down or some desired command if it's nudging, attention, nudging you for attention or barking or pawing at you for attention or if you want to pet the dog. So when it sits, pet it on its chin, say the word sit and only the word sit and only say it once. Um, and uh, if it's already sitting, ask it to sit over here or ask it to lay down. So it has to do something to change its state before it can earn that affection. After a while, it will start sitting in front of you to prepay for attention. Now it's learned through operant conditioning that 
well, actually, that's really classical, but it's learned that sitting is a great way to get people's attention and or, or laying down or whatever it is. Um, now, to have them get off the furniture, one of, one of the things which they're, and you have to film it, but right now they're both on the furniture. Off. So to get the dogs off the furniture, what I do is I just touch their nose with a treat, I throw it on the ground, and when they lick it up, I say the word off, kind of like when I said, talked about vacation or holiday in the free video above. Um, so petting with a purpose is commanding the dog to do something else because it's demanding attention from you or you want to pet it. Passive training is waiting for the dog to voluntarily offer the behavior on their own without any input. So if one of the dogs were to come over here and I pet it and say, come, that's a classical, that's a version of this uh, passive training. Uh, every time the dog sits, you pet it and say sit. Every time it lays down, you pet it and say crash. Those are the dog bed, you call it place or congregation or whatever the words are that you use. Uh, and so this way the dog has a vocabulary and knows the things that I, that I can do to make my humans happy. A lot of my clients ask, what can your dog do to make, what can your dog do to make you happy? And they can't, they give me a list of things they don't want their dog to do because that's, you know, uh, that's what, how most people think about it. But the more we pet the dog when it sits and lays down and comes and does all the things we want, the more it will continue to emulate, but emulate those behaviors. Um, we went over the four escalating consequences, uh, uh, which are the first one is a hiss, second one is stand up abruptly, turn to face the dog, wait for him to stop moving, take two steps backwards, and then uh, pause for a second. The third one is to march directly at the dog um, and come. Uh, that was not classical, uh, or that's not passive training, that was just a redirect. Um, and then we're going to say whatever the command of is. Um, and uh, the other thing, because they get excited for when people come to the door, every once in a while I'll go like this. And then nobody's getting up and running to the door, nobody's coming in through the door. Even though they see me do it, most of the time they'll still run to the door anyway. You have the doorbell, ring the doorbell every time you're outside walking by without coming through the door, so we de-associate, disassociate it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> That's normal. I mean, some people want their dogs to bark, but if you don't, just every once in a while watch TV, just do that the two times, and then nobody gets up, nobody gets up, nobody comes inside. After a while, they're like, ah, it's another drill. It's like, this is BS. It's supposed to be coming through the door. Come. Um, let me see. Uh, I'd like to see the guardians training the dogs to commands. So each week, each week, I'd like the guardian you guys to switch positions. Bubba, sit. Sit. You didn't sit down, so that's why you're not getting one. But if you do, you'll get one so fast, it's gonna make your head spin. Um, so, <laughs> crash. He's like, I'm gonna just do everything as long as I get treats. Which reminds me, you might wanna get one of these that's not been chewed on. This is from one of my dogs. Um, but uh, this has a little clip, so you can just clip it to your belt, so you can leave it in your car when you come inside and you have treats. You could be paying off at any time. I better be on my best behavior as a dog. Um, okay, so I'd like this to see the guardians go to YouTube or uh, you know Google or wherever you want. Find some easy dog tricks. Don't make, sure make don't make it too complicated. Roll over, play fetch, whatever it is. Um, but each uh, teach the dog separately. You can't molest my hand for that treat. But if you do something I like, I will give it to you. Um, teach them, work with the dog separately, guardian A, and then once the dogs both know how to do it, show guardian B, crash, um, and then all week long. Emphasize that trick. Every time you want to go outside, roll over. Every time you want to get fed, roll over. Roll over. After a while, the dog's going to be rolling over for everything. Then the next week, Guardian B takes the lead. It takes one of the dogs separately, teaches that dog the command, then switches dogs, teaches the next dog, and then that week, all week long, we're working on that command. If you guys each do that with four different commands, you'll have now eight different ways to redirect your dog's attention. It's going to boost their self-esteem. It's going to increase their respect for you as authority figures. And since you guys are both teaching the dogs the commands, right now we have dog owned by one person, dog owned by a second person. I would say guardian. Um, but now they're going to start both training uh, the dog, and that's going to have a correlation of their self-esteem and confidence because you're associated with them learning that you're trick with command. So it helps in a multitude of ways. Um, I'd also like to see the guardians, um, uh, what was the last thing I wanted to go over? Um, well, I, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, uh, well, make sure you're feeding. I think I talked about that above. I didn't talk about feeding, but make sure you're eating something first. Um, now, we want them to practice being together in any area capacity that they fail. So since they've had problems in a confined area, it's probably, and I asked one of the guardians when the other one was away, if they happened when the dogs were overexcited, and now she thinks that was the case. So what we want to do is sufficiently exercise the dogs 
then we want to bring them together and help them practice being in that room. So I know that room's probably not a super convenient room for you guys around the couch, but get some phone covers and go sit in there and hang out there with the dogs together. We want them to practice developing memory acronyms of being in the room that you want to be in, being in there together, and we set them up for success by over-exercising. Well, not over-exercising, get a sufficient exercise. And then we have a human supervisor who's just going to be nap. But again, anytime this starts, starts, starts going on, I want you to interpret that as the dog's way of saying, I have too much excess energy. Now, um, uh, Bubba has a chance to turn into this lab ears that are kind of squared like this. When they're in, facing inside, it's kind of more accommodating. When they're facing the front, I call it the pharaoh look. Uh, I can only do it if I hold my hand this way. That's a very kind of subordinate uh, sort of posture. So I wouldn't be worried about them wrestling if you see that from him. But if you see one of the dogs want to get away, wants to get away from the other dog, that's when I want to intercede. Or if the energy gets too high, intercede for that. In order to gauge their energy when they're playing, you know, gauge it from one to ten. And whenever they pass level five energy, go over there. And if you have to grab them by the collars, don't force them to sit, but just take them apart from each other. Maybe one around the corner so they can't see each other. Wait for them to settle down. Now we went over a focus exercise off camera. I have videos for that if you forget how to do that. Remember for focus, you want to get to the point where they're at, uh, they're at a 15 second focus inside before we start using it outside. And we want to be able to have a 15 second focus outside before we ever start to use it. So you really probably shouldn't use it until you're about 10 to 14 days in. But then when they're roughhousing and they're just focused, they're just stopping to really look up at you. It's a great way to redirect their attention. Uh, remember to practice and set them up for success by doing the bacon and doing the dry run of sitting down at the table or pretend cooking before you do your actual cooking. Um, remember saying what command word only once, the more you say it, the less you mean it. Come. Sit. Why are you not sitting? This is the end of the session. You're supposed to make me look good and sit down. Now, in this case, I normally would just give him one and wouldn't give him one at all and create a, there we go, sit, sit, create a more of a motivation. Well, this is Hans, and this is Bubba, and this is the roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.